What's up YouTube? It's Nate with Geo Aquariums. Welcome back. Today I want to talk about TDS and its place in the fish keeping hobby. Okay, so with any conversation to start off with what the acronym means, right? TDS means total dissolved solids. Well, Nate, what does that mean? Total dissolved solids is literally everything. So TDS equals everything. Uh, you might remember from some of the chemistry classes you had, you recognize some of these uh, letters and plus signs and negative signs, stuff like that. Uh, so these all come from periodic table of elements. I have one sitting back there. I was looking over myself thinking about this. TDS literally measures all of these things. Okay, so the practical use in the real world. Uh, I have a degree in geology, some of the things they thought, taught us. So as water runs over these rocks, right, it runs through the soil, it picks up all these different elements, right? It picks up calcium, sodium, potassium. It picks up heavy metals, copper, iron, right? These, these different things. And you can actually find mineral deposits based on how the TDS might jump up. So say one mile up, the TDS was 200, one mile down, it's 1,000. Maybe you have some sort of pollution. Uh, maybe, again, like I said, you have some sort of rock that's dissolving and putting all these elements into the water. So that's kind of how it's used in the real world now. So the fish keeping hobby. You'll see it all the time, right? You're looking at these different species you want to keep, and it gives you a list of water parameters, and TDS is always one of them. Well, why? Son of a... All right, so we got the lights back on. Let's get this train rolling again. Uh, so why is TDS always in the list of parameters, right? It's just one of those things that something that is measured, right? It's picked up in the wild. What is the TDS of that river? Typically, the higher the TDS, the harder the water, right? So general hardness is measuring your calcium and your magnesium, okay? So if there's more calcium and magnesium, it's harder the water. pH is typically higher. Your TDS is typically higher. Okay, so they kind of talk about it in relation to the acidicness or the hardness of the water. However, I would not, and I repeat, I would not strictly go off of TDS. TDS is not going to do you a solid when you're trying to figure out whether or not your water is safe to keep certain species. Okay, what you can use TDS for, and what I use TDS for, I was talking about it, it takes, it measures everything, right? Everything, okay? So you, you hear the conversation all the time, oh, I can't trust my water company, I can't trust my water company, and that's true, okay? Uh, but their primary objective is to make sure the water is safe for us people to drink, okay? To make sure that there's not uh, poop in our water, more or less, right? There's not E. coli bacteria, there's not these different allergies and things, right? It's keeping it safe for us. So if they were to just throw a bunch of chemicals down, triple their the chlorine in the water, um, I don't know if they would have to let everybody know or not, but something you can do right before your water change, you take one of these handy dandy TDS meters, <clears throat> you throw it underneath your faucet, and you get a reading back on your water. So typically, my water here is about 230 to 250 parts per million, okay? So that being said, if I were to go and I'm like, ah, I think I should do a water change today, and I were to hit my water, and my water came back at like 800 or something like that, that would be a telltale sign that I should not do a water change that day. <laughs> that there's probably something going on with my water. From there, I could dig into it. I could say, hey, what's going on? Um, but more or less, you could probably just wait it out at the same time. Give it a week's time. Maybe go pick up some s distilled water or something like that. You could figure out ways around it. But it's a really good way to check to make sure that your tap water has not changed from the previous time that you filled up your tank. So as long as that is consistent, typically your fish are okay. So what I do suggest if you're trying to figure out what species to keep, I don't think TDS is the way to go. Okay, It is a great way to make sure you don't kill your fish, but it's not a great way to make sure that your fish are going to be safe in your water. Get yourself a GH and KH test kit. Absolutely awesome. Uh, I use it frequently. When I first came here, I actually collected some water to make sure that the water wasn't going to be too crazy from back home because I just moved. Anyways, um, it's a great way to make sure you don't kill your fish, but use a GH and KH test kit. You can figure out if your water is safe and make sure that it meets those parameters. That's far more important than a TDS, as well as using like a master test kit. You can figure out your pH. You can figure out whether or not there's a lot of nitrate in the water already. Some of these farming communities, you never really know how much fertilizer they're throwing on the ground. But overall, the TDS is just a great, quick way. It takes five seconds to make sure that your fish or make sure that water that you're about to throw in your fish tanks is not different than it was a week prior. So that's all I really have for you on TDS. That's my two cents. Uh, thank you all for watching. 
And uh, if you have any suggestions for the 100-gallon tank, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.